All right, so we are officially live. What's up? It's Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Today, I'm joined by one of my favorite people, Houston Mega Agent and Team Leader. Demonium. Hey, keep in mind, guys, these episodes are also recorded and transcribed over at theagentfactory.com. Trisha, without further ado, are you ready to go? Ready. Hey, you guys. Let's rock and roll, man. So, so real quick, I mean, the, the reason why I was actually considering doing these, um, these episodes back to back to back to back like I have been is because I know a lot of agents are on lockdown right now. No excuse for not being productive, certainly. Um, but I know people are consuming more content. They're looking for ways to continue to be able to, to make money, right? I mean, we, that's what we all do. But d real estate in Texas um, and in Ohio, I know, have been deemed as essential. And, uh, and so that means we have um, an opportunity to go out and make money. Um, and while it may be a little more complicated, there are still people making money. I know in our market, uh, which is much smaller than the Houston market, um, we had 385 transactions pending last or uh, that went pending the week before last. And then last week there were 345 that went pending. So we still know that buyers are active into the marketplace. And, and so we may have to be a little bit more tactical about how we go and get in front of those people. But before we get into that, Trisha, before you start dropping your value bombs, give people a little background on you. Yes, you got it. Hi, everybody. Trisha Turner here. Uh, been in real estate forever, 1992, as a matter of fact. I am in the greater Houston area, had my own independent brokerage, and now have an EXP branch office. And my team is within the EXP brokerage, of course, which is the Trisha Turner Properties Group. And we have about 25 members on our team serving all the way from Austin down to Galveston. So we are heavily involved in real estate, trying to help everybody have an abundant life and always trying to improve the real estate industry. Yes, 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 yes. 92, you must've got in when you were what, 15, 16? Yeah, 12. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Yeah, that is awesome. So um, tell me a little bit about, you know, I, I, I had Nick Good on the show who uh, works out of the Dallas market and you and Nick are okay. really good friends. And, yeah. um, and so tell me a little bit about what's going on right now in the Houston area. How is it different or how is it like um, what we're all experiencing? You know, oddly enough, and I'm in the outskirts of Houston, um, so I'm in the suburbs, of course, um, but we still have a lot of activity here. When this coronavirus first hit, you know, there was a lot of people just like normal were in panic mode and shock like what is this everyone was scared to go outside people were scared to go to their business you know are, are we really um not capable of doing our jobs but then us that are in the industry if you're always looking ahead trying to do the right thing it's like okay hold on a second here as long as we do things cautiously we can't allow this to shut us down because we in the real estate industry are responsible for feeding so many people there's still people that need desperately need to sell their home for one reason or another there's still buyers that need to buy a home right now so we can't just shut down and wait and see what happens we just need to be smart proactive and make sure we're doing the right thing so we got to keep moving and unfortunately a lot of people in our industry here locally don't they are paralyzed and you see a lot of them on vacation a lot of them not doing anything and i've never been one that lives in fear so in our office we're on the phone we're making calls i have probably 500 emails that i need to tend to literally this week yeah. because we just keep stacking up because we are working and and it's it's out there everybody knows we're still working yeah. now we're being really cautious um, about entering people's homes you know if the sellers aren't comfortable with us bringing buyers in we get it we can do virtual tours we're coming in with wipes we've got gloves masks you name it whatever it takes to make everybody comfortable that's what we're doing yeah. but what i've also seen happening here too is we had a whole slew of listings that were set to go live the first week of april they're on hold yeah. not by us that was the sellers they're like mm -hmm. you know what 
we got the shelter in place thing through the end of April. And I just don't know. I don't know that I really want people in my house right now or that I want to leave my house. And sure. so we had a lot of that. And I'm not one that likes to push people when they're uncomfortable. No. Why? I mean, why? You know, is it going to kill us? Is it going to make or break if we wait till the first week of May? No. What I think is going to happen is come first week of May, we're going to have a mad dash for people to go buy these houses. Yeah. So what ended up happening was we have a bunch of listings on hold. We're just following up with them. We're making all of our calls, sphere, everything that we're supposed to be doing. But what I'm doing is working on the business. So things that needed to get done to make us better and fine tune things and, and take it to the next level are things that I've been working on like, crazy and i can't wait till may 1st you know cannot yeah. wait and just so you know guys what she means by working on the business is is that she may no longer be going on listing appointments right now um she is looking at the bigger picture in other words she's aloft to thirty thousand feet and she's looking at her business from above saying where can i make improvements in my business right because oftentimes what happens is when we're really busy when we're going on listings when we're showing buyers when we're coaching our agents, right? Then we're working in the business. And sometimes when there's a lull or, you know, a pandemic, right? It gives us opportunities and we have more time, but to stay productive, we work on the business. We work on, we start becoming visionaries, right? Where can we take this? Where do we see this thing going? And that's what she means by working on the business so that when she starts working in the business again, which she will, um, everything will be in place to continue to move the business forward because she's planning now. She's planning ahead now. Correct, Tricia? Correct. You know, in real estate, what you do today will determine how you get paid 30, 60, 90 days from now. So yeah. these agents that are taking the month of April off because they think that there's nothing to do, they're really going to feel it in May and June. You know, yeah. they may have some closings in April because of what they worked on in February and March. But if you're not working on anything in the month of April, I'm not sure how your May and June are going to look, or even July mm -hmm. for that matter. So for us, we keep a steady pipeline, thank heavens. But at the same time, the things that I wanted to be working on but did not have time because we're running now, you know, all the time. Once this thing hit, I was like, whoa, hold on a second. First of all, they tell you, you know, trim the fat. So that was the first thing you're supposed sure. to do. So you start looking, well, what am I spending money on that I'm really not getting a return on? And it's yeah. something I just kind of let run on autopilot because I didn't feel like taking the time to look at it. Yeah. Now I've looked at all that and I'm like, wow, cancel. That needs to be shut off. That did nothing for the last year. Yeah. And then if you're smart, you take those things that weren't working. You take the money that you had there, move it into something that you were looking at, and then you pull the trigger on that. Yeah. And so we have spent, Alyssa, who is our marketing girl and I have spent, you know, the office has been open every day. I've been here and she's been here. And then outside of that, our listing manager has been here almost every day. She took that first week off but yeah. we are now in week four of shelter in place and you just can't be shut down so now we've worked on all this thing all that we needed to do now we're ready just to launch it's all in onboarding right now yeah so now you know in the next couple of days i'll be like chewing my fingernails like gosh get me out of here just yeah. waiting for this april 30th date which i right. hope and pray that we get released from this. But at the same time, you have to stay relevant because again, you know, there's so many people in so many industries that depend on us selling a house. Yeah. You know, you got movers, insurance people, title, inspectors, painters, carpet people. Who do, I mean, they all depend on us to feed them and their families. Yeah. So the moment us in the real estate industry get lazy or complacent or let that fear creep in where it just paralyzes you. Think of how many lives are affected by that. In addition to this Corona stuff, you yeah. know, you just can't do it. You, and it, but you know, it's in your mind too. It's so much of it is mindset, right? Like you got to get up every day. You have the choice to do. I mean, you know, like this morning I was working out this morning and I was tired this morning because I have gotten up at three today and yesterday because I had an extra load of work to do. I normally am up at four. And so I was extra tired this morning when I was working out. And so I did mentally prepare my mind even through it. I was like, I'm going to push through. I can do this. It's, you know, an hour. What is an hour? Same thing in real estate. So when you don't feel like doing something today, guess what? You need to. You have to keep pushing every day. Yeah. Your life depends on it, literally. It's such a great point. And you know what I found is that 
And this is so sad because I know everybody has it within them to, to, to um, there's so much opportunity in real estate. There really is. And it really is just a mindset. But what I find, unfortunately, is that when there's something that someone that's average or below average can attach themselves to, be it a pandemic or, you know, a blizzard comes through up here in Ohio, right? It's, oh, they can't wait to be able to use that as an excuse for their non-productivity. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, now I finally have a really good excuse for not being productive, right? Because once I tell once I tell my team leader or once I tell my coach that, you know, there was a pandemic, they have to say, oh, well, you know, oh, yeah, you're right. You can't. And we're supposed to buy into that, right? Because if we don't, we're insensitive, right? We don't want to be insensitive because, you know, then you get wrung out on social media. But um, but you know, that's kind of what we're dealing with. But I, one thing I want to touch on here, because you, you're you a big like uh, morning routine gal. You know what I mean? You've always been really big on having a consistent morning routine. Mm-hmm. So, and you are a champion in the, in the best sense of the word. So as a champion, has this changed your morning routine at all? One no. bit? Not one no. bit? No. And in my house, my morning routine is kind of different from others because I do have a special needs child and he's 19. So traditionally, and my kids are older. So traditionally when you have older kids, you should have a less stringent morning routine because you shouldn't have to tend to children so much. They usually can tend to themselves. But because my son is 19 and he's a special needs child, he does need everything. I need to get his food ready. I need to make sure he's ready. He needs everything. I mean, it's like having a small child. And so when he's in school, it's critical that he's up at a certain time. It takes him a lot longer to get ready than most kids. So we're in one routine in that time of the year when he's because the bus comes to the door. So mm-hmm. he's got to be ready to get on that bus or they'll leave without him. Well, now that there is no school, he's at home school. And even though he's 19 and technically he graduated last year, he's what they call a super senior here. So a super senior in our school system here is for a special needs kid. They graduate from high school and then they can stay in high school for another two or three years. And they're called super seniors because other than the, them being in high school, they really don't have any structure to the day. Where do they go after high school? Right. And so he's a super senior. So right now schools are closed. So he technically doesn't have anything to do other than stay at home with his siblings. But it throws off his entire morning routine because He doesn't have to get up at the crack of dawn. What is he going to do all day? So I'm allowing him to sleep in a little bit because there's nothing really for him to do during the day. But it throws off my morning routine a little bit because it's very regimented around his schedule. So I had to just make adjustments big time adjustments. And so it, I just shifted what time I'm getting in the shower. I just shifted what time I'm going to be done working out. I just shifted what time I'm going to be done leaving my house. Traditionally, I like to be out of my house between 7.30 and 8. And by then I've done everything. I've done workout. He's ready for school. He's gone and I'm ready for the day. But because I'm letting him sleep longer, I'm now not getting to my office until sometimes 10, sometimes 9.30. But I'm working at home before that. And you know, in the first week, it was really hard. I mean, I was frustrated because it had me off schedule. You know, I'm still doing everything that I do every morning, but I'm not at my office where I like to start my day. And that took me about a week. And I could have been, you know, small minded and been like complaining about it. Well, this just sucks. Maybe I just need to wait till we go back to work before I implement my schedule. But I didn't. I was like, okay, there's kind of a mindset thing. It is what it is. They're clearly not going back to school right now. I'm not happy about this new routine, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to make do. This is my new schedule right now. I have to stay at home for the betterment of my son until he's up and fed. And then I can come to the office. And so that was a hard thing for me, but it never adjusted how I got up. In fact, it made me get up a little bit earlier. Like I said, at three because of that schedule and what I have to have done before my critical things have to get done too. So no, there's no reason in the world for people not to be up doing their routine. And the agents that I've talked to in my own organization who, because of this coronavirus have gotten off of their morning routine, they're struggling. They're struggling big time. They've reached out to me. They feel bad. They feel hopeless. They feel like they're not being productive. They feel lost. And I tell them, are you getting up and are you doing your morning routine? No, yeah. you're not. And I tell you, you have to get back to that because it's a choice. 
Just because your kids aren't up going to school, just because the office may not be open at a certain time, just because it's shelter in place does not mean you change your routine. You right. still get up and you still do the things that move the needle every single day. You right. have to. So yeah. It's so critical right now. Yep. And, I, you know, my workouts, obviously, our gyms are closed now. And yeah. I have a, I have a treadmill and I have a, some 20 pound uh, dumbbells and some 30 pound dumbbells. <laughs> I've, been get, I've been getting my workouts every day, man. I've been doing them every day. And, I, you know, it's just because I'm tr I have to have that um, that routine. I have to create that normalcy. And it's just the new normal for now. Right. Oh, and yeah. um, Marcus Aurelius says that it's not things or events that upset you. It's your judgment about those things. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so all you have to do is like where I used to go into the gym every day and, and lift and have my normal routine is you switch your mindset to now. This is I'm still getting my workout. Right. But it's just in a different environment. It's with different tools. Mm -hmm. And and so what I what I was trying to do is just create that normalcy like you. So walk us through real quickly, if you don't mind. Um, what does a, tr a typical morning look like for you? Typical morning for me um, usually starts at four. Sometimes it's three. But mind, body and soul, that's the focus of my morning. And depending on what's on my schedule for that day, if I need to go longer in my mindset, I will. But I'm I start right away with gratitude. I thank God for every day. And then I list things out that I'm thankful for, because when you start being thankful for things every single day, it's real easy to stay in that kind of mindset. So I start there. I read a section of Proverbs every single day. And really, it just depends on the day, like Proverbs 14 was today because today's the 14th and so I start there and then I have a devotional book and I change up my devotional books every day but it's based it's all biblical I start there and then from there depends on what I'm studying um, I was reading Gary V's book this morning and so um, re I'm, I am reading Gary V and so I read a chapter of Gary V's book and then from there by the time I've read those two things it's usually about almost an hour that I've been up and the whole time I'm dr drinking some caffeinated water and then I hit it I work out in my living room where I have worked out since my 19 year old was born because when you have a special needs child the gyms don't always want them there in the kids club and so my child was very special I mean, he had a lot of medical problems and I used to be a gym rat and because of uh, not because of him but because of the gyms you know policies I had to learn to work out from home so this hasn't changed up my routine I do an hour workout right there in my living room yeah. and then from there it's shower get ready for the day but the whole time I'm getting ready for the the day I'm still working on my mindset because I've got lessons either on YouTube or some of the stuff that we study and train playing the whole time I'm putting my makeup on so I'm constantly feeding my mind until I'm ready to walk out the door and that's critical because then when you walk out the door it's like game on I mean there's not much that can rattle me yeah. you know I'm, a, I'm real good at something will bother me just for a second but then okay it is what it is you know here's a, a story for you this morning wasn't even expecting this one of my luxury listings it's a million dollar listing we are under contract that thing is scheduled to close just check with the buyer yesterday all is good i get a call from my seller's partner it, it was two guys um my seller died last night in the house um he was elderly yeah the partner oh found him gosh. yeah he had had a stroke and he found him uh in between the toilet and the wall wow Gone. And I'm like, uh, wow. I sat there like mind blown for a minute, speechless. And my client's crying on the other line. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. I mean, you know, at that point you have to take your salesperson's hat off and yeah. wow, I can't even imagine where you are and where you're, what you're going through right now. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't prepared to deal with that today, but it is what it is. And so kind of like this coronavirus, it is what it is. And I'm real good at, okay, I'm going to take in this information. Let me call you back in a minute. I kind of put the, have to put the phone down. I have to gather my thoughts. And then we got to come up with a plan. At the end of the day, we still have to keep moving forward, just like this coronavirus. And it's in the mind. I could have sat there and gotten paralyzed and thought, you know, what am I going to do? But it's up to us as leaders to not, what am I going to do? We're going to figure this out. There's always a solution. And I knew that there was, I just needed to sit for a minute because that took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting that phone call as soon as I got in the office. Yeah. Okay. Let me 
figure, let me make some calls. Let me put things in action because we still have to continue on our path. Yeah. We just are going to walk a little bit slower right now. We may make a little bit of changes just like we're doing with the coronavirus. We're still on our path. We just are going to walk a little bit slower. We may do things a little bit differently than we thought we were doing. But at the end of the day, we still have an end game. And yeah. that's with everything. And if I got up every single day and I couldn't even imagine it, if I got up every single day, got out of bed, jumped in the shower, got ready for work and started my day, I pretty much think I would be a failure. I, I, I do because forever I have been a I've worked out since I was 17. So that's been a mindset forever. And then reading, I wasn't an avid reader until probably tw 10, maybe 12 years ago. But and I only started reading because I went through a divorce and I hated my ex-husband, quite honestly. And I couldn't get past that eating me alive I couldn't get past this hate for him and I had to read a book on forgiveness honestly that's how it all began I read a Joyce Meyer book on forgiveness and I would read every single day and it worked yeah. I just did everything the book told me to do and I got in such a habit of reading that I started reading Joel Osteen books and then it turned into I wanted to read the Bible and then it was like then from there it was like I saw how much of effect it had on my life and my mindset and my thought process. So then of course I wanted to work on my mind, not just my soul. So yeah. then I started adding more reading time to it and adding leadership books and mindset and strategies. And then of course, anytime you get in a conversation with Michael Reese, <laughs> he's going to dump about five books on you. So my library is huge because then of course you seek people that are like-minded people. And so we all are readers. You are too. And so anytime I hear you mention a book, if I haven't read it, I'm like, Oh, I write that down and I order it. And so I have this huge book club that I've created that I have to dig into every single day, but it's seeking. We always have to seek to be a better us to be a better parent, a better leader, a better person. And so I believe that's what reading does. It fulfills that, it does for me. And without reading, without feeding my mind and my body and my soul, I think I would be empty. I know that I would. And so I don't know how people function day to day without it. I would challenge everybody, at least for the next two weeks as we're all still kind of quarantined, read. If you feel yourself lost or not knowing what to do, read, reach out to me, reach out to any of us. We'll give you a whole list of books to read, but read, you know, the power of positive thinking is one of my favorite books, which I've mentioned before. And I've read that book probably five times and I revert back to it. If I wake up and something sets off the, the morning where it's like, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Or my computer or something that irritates me. That book is always sitting right there and within arm's reach. And I've got stuff highlighted in there that redirects my mind back to being grateful. You know, it is what it is. This, these things will pass. This too shall pass. This yeah. stuff is not permanent. And so with us and our mindset, you know, if we allow these things that are out of our control, number one, to derail us and to cripple us, think of how our world would be if we all did that. Yeah. You know, be devastating. Yeah. Devastating. Do you think that um, in, in, in I, the mornings, I think, are, are the perfect time because it's really the only the time of the day that you still have almost absolute control over. Right. And, and because like if you, they always say if you win the morning, you can win the day. Right. And, and I always love to get the most important things out of the way first thing in the morning, because it seems like after about, you know, 1030 or 11 or especially after lunch, you're more reactive. In other words, you're responding to the things that you may have created out of the prospecting, which, you know, you did or responding to, um, you know, um, seller calls or buyer calls or inspections or whatever it is, right? And the more that if you get the morning right, you can essentially free yourself up to be reactive for the rest of the day. You can, because you're, you're so productive for that, you know, even if it's just a couple hours or a few hours in the morning, you're laser focused in your productivity that it essentially creates the rest of the day. Would you agree with that? I would. And then that goes to the perfect day. 
So if you've actually sat down and written out, what is your perfect day? We all have perfect days or what our idea of a perfect day is. Mm -hmm. So that's how you define it. What is your perfect day? Everybody should sit down, especially if you're sitting at home, you don't have anything to do. You should sit down. If there was no coronavirus, what would your perfect day look like? Mm -hmm. And you need to try to establish that. And for me, I have that established. I know what my perfect day is. And if my perfect morning doesn't start off right and I don't get that my my perfect day is ruined and at the end of the day I find myself irritable and grumpy and it's like I just want to go to bed I want to start over you know I feel yeah. like something is missing and research will show you and this doesn't go for everybody but research will show you that your brain is most creative during the first three to four hours that you're awake and I I know a hundred percent that is for me so I get up again super early but I have notepads little bitty notepads like everywhere because things will just come to me where I'll be like Oh my gosh, I need to do this or I need to call this person. I did I need to say this or post this. And so I write stuff down constantly because my brain fires from like 4 a.m. Mine goes on till about 10, where it's just firing. Things are going off up there constantly. So for me, that morning time is critical because as the hours go on, like three in the afternoon, I'm not very creative, nowhere near as I am in the morning. And in the evening, I don't even like to run people's numbers. I don't want to talk numbers with people after eight o'clock because I'm not at 100%. Right. And I know that. And so it's like, I don't even want to go there. I need to be shut off, you know, after nine for sure. I don't want to try to think like that. I don't need to. Yeah. My brain is not in its best performing mode then. And right. when you know that stuff about yourself and there's no way to know it unless you've spent the time analyzing it and reconstructing it. What, what, how does this work best in my life? And when you can sit and do that, that's when you'll have more fulfillment, I believe. And right now with people depressed and bored and at home and feeling trapped, they should sit down and really take this time to do that. Whether you're a stay at home mom, whether you're a stay at home dad, whether you work outside your house, whatever, everybody can have a perfect routine. Everybody. You just have to sit down and put it out on, the, on a schedule. Everybody can do it yep. and should do it. And so um, getting the morning right and personal development are great recommendations. Um, what are some other things that you're recommending your agents do right now? All of my agents are to be reaching out to their past clients, sphere of influence, anybody. We have a top 100 list. I have a top 200. Everybody should have a top 100 list. That is somebody that you've either done business with and they absolutely are a raving fan. It could be a family member that you know would give you business at, at the drop of a hat. It could be your kid's doctor if you've had them forever. Anybody that you know, if they hear of real estate, they're going to think of you. That's your top 100 list. You may not be able to get to 100 right away way it takes time because you don't want to just put a stranger there it needs to be somebody that you have regular contact with and then you need to be reaching out to them are they okay or do you guys need anything hey just thinking about you today just a random text message like that you never know what people are going through on the other end oftentimes pride gets in the way people aren't going to let you know if they're having a bad day people aren't going to let you know if they're drinking all day long and they shouldn't be people aren't going to let you know that they feel like you know, taking a handful of pills. Nobody is really going to tell you that it's got to be us just doing the right things and just reaching out. I reach out to people all the time in my top 200 lists and send the messages and, and I get messages right back. Oh my gosh, thank you for thinking of me. That was so nice. I'm doing great. How's your family engaging with people? That's what all the agents have to be doing right now. And if you have a book of business that you had coming up that you were nurturing, you need to, yes, we still need to be reaching out to them because guess what? It's mid April right now. You should be making a plan because hopefully we're all going to come out of this or a lot of us are going to come out of this at the end of April and be able to go back to somewhat of a normal existence. And so you need to be reaching out to them. Hey, I know we were thinking about getting on the market in April. Clearly we are not. So we are now targeting May. Let's look on the calendar and let's get our dates lined up because we need to stop kind of being so gentle with everybody. We're kind of in the mindset now here anyway, where people are kind of sick of the coronavirus. It's a real pain in the butt. And let's get back to business. People are wanting to get back to business. They're chomping at the bit to get out of their house. And so we need to not be the enabler, not be the one walking on eggshells, trying to talk to everybody. We need to be that voice of, okay, 
Um, I believe that we're going to come out of this April 30th. So you want to sell your house in March. We didn't get a chance to get it on the market. Let's have it on the market first week of May. Are you good with that? Let's take control of the conversation. Yeah. And that's what my agents are to be doing and digging deep into training. Like I just told them yesterday, if you have not went through your agent success plan, if you have not went through our social media training, if you have not, and I lined out all these things that we do, if you have not done these things, shame on you, shame on you, you know, because at the end of the day, I am not going to be nagging at you. You are a grown up. Everybody out there is a grown up. You know, we are all entrepreneurs. We are all business owners. And if you, and you're responsible for your own actions, it's a choice you can make. If somebody's got to sit there and reach out to you every single day, nagging and prodding and prodding you to do what you need to do become, to become a better you, there's a problem there. Yeah. You know, there is a problem there. And I'm not the one that's going to sit there and I don't have that kind of, um, empathy. I don't, I'm not going to reach out and be that little baby, you know, baby caretaker person. Cause I don't have that. Yeah. I've never had that in my life where someone's like, Hey, no, let, let's get stuff done. Boom. Let's make it happen. Cause that's how you make things happen when you keep moving. You know, I don't have that. My mom was like that. She never was, um, you know, like if you fell down on your bike and you were crying, she'd be like, yeah, you'll be all right. It was one of those kind of things, you know? Yeah. So I have that same mindset. It's like, okay, it's the coronavirus, but you're going to be all right. Okay. That's just an excuse, but yeah. that is no excuse not to train. That is no excuse not to make your calls. That is no excuse. I mean, like there was an agent, I even heard that, you know, it's not really been doing crap kind of on vacation in our own organization. It's like, why? At office is here. Where, why? I cannot reach out to you every single, I will not, I will not. And agents have got to be able to be self-disciplined. That's part of being an entrepreneur, self-disciplined, self-motivated, seeking, seeking the right things, right people, right group to motivate you, empower you, inspire you to get up every day and do the right things in the right order. Right. You know? Trisha, how, dangerous, how dangerous is it to take the month of April off? Oh my gosh, it's horrible. I can't even imagine taking the month of April off here. Like market research shows that most homes go on the market, uh, March and April, most homes sell April and May. And then sometimes in June, but after June here, traditionally you'll see July and August will start to slow down. They'll still be good, but they'll be slower. Yeah. Well, holy crap. Now we just missed the month of April. What are you going to do? We got some catching up to do. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to be right. Cause here's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Come end of April. If we all get released from this, there's going to be so many agents that have been on vacation. They've lost momentum. They've lost mindset. It, they're going to come out and be like, I don't even know what to do. Where do I go? Who do I call? There's going to be a lot of this lost people. What is next? We're not lost. I tell you that. We're like, I feel like I have, I've loaded a slingshot and I have it reared all the way back and I just want to let go. That's where we are. And I, and I can't, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just want to let this thing go. <laughs> have you That's heard of any cases of the coronavirus being transferred via the phone? <laughs> no. Yeah. How about I you? I, I didn't think so. No, <laughs> no, not at all. No, I think everyone's okay with that. I'm yeah. not going to go on the record and say that, heaven forbid, but no, I think it's all good. I think everybody's safe. And, you know, I couldn't imagine, like, I've worked every single day. Like I said, if it's not in the business, it's on the business because there's always things to do. My desk has been messier this entire month than it's ever been because I'm usually not in here other than working on stuff and then I'm out the door. But I've been in here, like, consumed all day long. So there's stuff that I'm working on everywhere because – I'm putting stuff together that's going to make us better, more efficient, make our systems better, more efficient stuff that I had thought about doing. Now I have the time to do it. And now come April 30th, that stuff's done and we can run like a well-oiled machine, which is what everybody should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. So Trisha, what's your, uh, what's your prediction on when this ends and then what happens when it's all over? What's your prediction? I'm an optimist and a lot of people say that I live in La La Land and I'm okay. I'll stay in La La Land, but I am a huge optimist. I believe that after April 30th comes, I believe our economy is going to come back. When I studied the market reports and I studied them yesterday morning, 59 and a half percent of the unemployed people are service oriented. They're either working a restaurant or a bar. Well, let me tell you something. 59 and a half percent. That's a huge number. They're all going to go back to work. 
most of them, not all of them, of course, but they're going to go back to work when our restaurants and bars can open back up. I know Houston is a big city about eating and drinking. We love to eat and drink. That's a hundred percent. We have a ton of restaurants. They're hurting right now. Yeah. They're all doing this draw. You know, you can come pick up your meals and stuff, but they're all hurting. So as soon as we're allowed to go back in there, will things be different? I think this will, I think they'll be different for the first maybe month. Just like any time you get scared in a situation, you come back a little bit slowly. But after a month, you know, four to six weeks, you're back at it full force. Even though you said you weren't going to be, you always are. Yeah. And I think it's going to be the same thing with society. We may sit at a restaurant, you know, six feet away from somebody in the beginning. But you'll see as time goes on, the tables will get closer and closer and closer. And we will get back to normal. We have to. It's the American way. And I believe that that's going to happen. I know when I looked at those market reports also they showed quarter three and quarter four in real estate are totally at an increase so all they're telling us in real estate is you need to worry about quarter two april may and june that's all you got to worry about quarter three and quarter four are supposed to be explosive so i go with that mindset because at the end of the day there are still people that want to buy a house there are still people that want to sell a house and there's still people out here like me that are willing to do those things so i think we're going to have a great economy i think it's going to shift some things around i think some people are going to be out of business but i do know that there's a lot of people that were already working from home prior to this so there will probably be a lot of people that stay working from home again it is what it is i believe our economy is going to be just fine though amen oh. hallelujah the eternal optimist always <laughs> christian turner man i love it i love it i love, it. I love the energy too you bring um, you. always a good time when we get on here together any um any uh any parting shots Definitely. If you are one of those that the points getting in here, here's something that Joel Osteen said. I'm a big, like I've told you guys, I'm a big fan of his. Here's yeah. something that he said that really sunk in with me. He's like, you have to think of yourself as a ship right now. And when a ship goes out to sea, the ship is out in this huge body of water. Well, as long as the ship stays without the water getting in, the ship is fine. It's when the water starts to seep in, that becomes a problem, a huge problem. And sometimes the ship sinks. Yeah. So you have to think of your body right now. When you go out into this world, if you allow all of this negativity in to seep into you day in, day out. You got the news on and they're telling you about the economy's going to never come back and you're never going to get back to work and oil's going down and we're at war and this is the end. If you allow that stuff in every single day, that's a problem and it's going to be a problem and you will sink. You cannot have that. You got to have your blinders on. If it requires tunnel vision, then do tunnel vision. Get off the TV, tune into something motivational, tune into something spiritual, tune into some books that will help you get through this. Focus on your mind. If you're a parent, you need to be focused on your mind now more than ever because your kids are going to model what you do. So you got to lead by example. And that's all you business owners out there too. If you guys are not encouraging the people in your organization to get up and get moving and do something, shame on you. Because again, every one of us have to lead by example, period. Love it. Miss Trisha, how can people get a hold of you and get some of that energy? Absolutely. Find me, of course, on Facebook all over the place. You can reach out to me at trishaturner.work and it's T-R-I-C-I-A, trishaturner.work. You can schedule a call there, we go to the website, whatever. It's the easiest way right there. And uh, of course, always on Facebook. Love it, love it, love it. As usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know this show is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Hey, do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. If you ever want to jump on a 30-minute call with me for a free business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. And for Trisha Turner and myself, that's all for this one, folks. Thanks so much. Bye, y'all.